guys welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you just stumbled across me um, before I start this reaction I just wanted to say thank you so much to the people who have subscribed and left such nice comments to me you have no idea how much fun I had reading those comments you guys are so knowledgeable and so nice and just really support that I have no clue <laughs> what I'm doing but um, I just want to reiterate that I really am never trying to offend anyone or make any assumptions. I I really want to educate myself, so if I misspeak or say something wrong, please just let me know in the comments because that's the last thing I want to do. Um, also, I am so, like, wanting to watch so many videos after I like watched the dynamite one I wanted to immediately go and watch another one but I knew that I didn't have the time to film it and edit it so I am holding back on it um so I have a full-time job and I go to school full-time so this is kind of what I do in my downtime so I'm gonna try my goal is to do at least right now like one or two videos a week um so please just be patient. I'm going to put them out as fast as I can, um, but just know that I I am wanting to. So I'd rather just do um, quality over quantity, I guess. Um, so I got a ton of requests to do a ton of different videos, but I think the one that made the most sense to me is to do the like introductions to them. So today I'm going to start by watching The Most Beautiful Life Goes On. And reacting to that um, it is a long video so hopefully you don't mind um, me watching that whole thing and pausing every once in a while to talk about my thoughts so without further ado let's just get into it because this is a 30 minute video and <laughs> it's probably gonna be a long one so grab a snack all right let's go I'm excited today Everyone knows the name of BTS. They've been invited onto late night talk shows, they've shattered records, they've sold out stadiums, they've made it onto the big screen. These days, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who didn't know who these guys were, or at least haven't heard one of their songs. And if they don't, either they've been living under a rock, or they're 100 years old. The success of the Bang 10 Boys is worldwide, but it wasn't always like this. And it all started with one man. YG. YG wanted to make himself a rap group. In the late 90s, he experimented also, with I have the captions on. different trainees, um, eventually choosing seven when members. When I put the video in, three of them eventually left it won't show four, that I have the captions on, Danny, but I promise Jin I have Wan, the captions on. Baek Young debuted in 1998 as One Time. Their first Sorry album, titled the One For Your Mind, was one of the year's best-selling albums and won several street. awards, including the Global Disc today. and SBS Music Awards for Best New Artist and KMTV's Award for Best Hip Hop Artist. The group enjoyed moderate success and released four more albums before going on indefinite hiatus in 2006 due to their mandatory military service. The year was 2010, and the five-year-old company, Big Hit Entertainment, had previously signed two artists, 88 and 2AM. They had their share of successes, but they were very traditional K-pop groups. Big Hit wanted a fresh new sound, and upon listening to One Time, CEO Hitman Bang si Hyuk had decided that that was the sound that he was looking for. And on top of that, the youth needed someone to relate to, and more importantly, look up to. He had decided he would create a hip-hop group. A hip-hop group? Okay, there's an ad, so I'm gonna talk right now for a second. I had no idea that they were a hip hop group. Um, and I also didn't know about the military service. I think, I think I did know, I just, I just don't know a lot, so I'll have to look that up on my own time. Um, that's interesting. I didn't know that they were a hip hop group. Goes to show how much I don't know. So, okay, let's get back into it. At 15 years old, Kim Namjoon auditioned for a certain Big Deal Records, which he completely botched, forgetting the lyrics to the song he was performing. Afterwards, fellow rapper Sleepy recommended that he try auditioning at another label, Big Hit, and even put in a good word for him to one of the producers there. At age 16, Kim auditioned in front of Bang Si Hyuk himself and instantly impressed him. He was offered a deal with Big Hit on the spot, which Kim accepted wow. and became a trainee, officially choosing a name for himself, at Rap 16. Monster, destined to become the leader of the newly created group. 
I heard that he doesn't now go that by that anymore. Now that leader was chosen, it's just RM. They needed more members. Correct me if I'm wrong. Min Yong Gi was a 17 year old living in Daegu, an avid basketball player and rapper. He had been interested in music, especially rap, from a very early age. And despite his parents' disapproval, started performing as a rapper while still in high school. He quickly gained attention as a rapper and producer in the underground hip hop scene. One day he saw a flyer for a rap competition called Hit It and decided to participate. And although he only placed second, the company hosting the competition, you guessed it, Big Hit, decided to sign him on as a producer. Hitman Bang spoke with him afterwards, convincing him to join a newly created hip hop awesome. group. He told him to just focus on rapping and assured him that he wouldn't need to dance. He was lying. And just like that, the new group had a second member, known as Suga, a combination of the okay, first pause. two. That's literally the like definition of when one door closes, another door opens, and like what's meant to be is gonna be, for sure. I mean, at least I think. Sorry. <laughs> of the first two syllables of shooting guard, his favorite position in basketball. But they wouldn't stop there. Rappers were nice, but Big Hit actually needed a dancer. Jung Ho Sok always loved dancing. He was in the starting lineup of the dance crew Neuron in his hometown Gwangju. Wow. He was good at it too, winning several local championships and even winning a championship at the national level in 2008. When he decided to audition for JYP Entertainment though, after a few rounds of auditions, he was cut. Fortunately, he didn't give up and went to his second option, a smaller, lesser known company, Big Hit Entertainment. His dance skills and strong understanding of rhythm made him an instant favorite, and he was signed on as J-Hope. Not only that, but they saw potential in him to become a rapper, which at this point he had little experience with. However, J-Hope quickly felt that he wasn't a good fit and decided to leave Big Hit until RM convinced both J-Hope and Big Hit that the group wouldn't be complete without him. He was right. <laughs> With the addition of J-Hope, the rap line was complete. Now they needed some singers. Now, just like how RM, an amazing rapper with a ton of experience, was chosen as the first official member of the rap line, it would only make sense that a legendary singer and dancer would be the perfect first member of the vocal line. Right? But Kim Sok Jin didn't have any sort of experience like that. Believe it or not, one day when he was walking on the streets of his hometown, Anyang, he was approached by a representative of SM Entertainment with an offer to work for the company. In typical Jin fashion, he never followed up with them because he believed it to be a scam. Apparently, Jin was a very good looking guy because years later, this time as a college student in Seoul, he was once again approached on the street, this time by an executive at Big Hit Entertainment. That's fate. He didn't sing, he didn't dance. He was at school to become an actor, and he decided to audition to become an actor. Big Hit, however, had different plans for him, and convinced him to become a vocalist for their new group. To do so, he literally learned to dance and sing starting from zero, Dang. but thankfully, not without help from other vocalists. John Jung Cook initially had dreams of becoming a badminton player when he was young, but after seeing G Dragon perform Heartbreaker on television, it influenced him to want to become a singer instead. Because of this, at only age 14, he decided to audition for the South Korean talent show Superstar K. He didn't pass auditions, he looks so but this was little. just enough to catch the eye of not one company, not two companies, but seven different companies. This included JYP, FNC, Woolum, Starship Entertainment, TS, Cube, and of course, Big Hit Entertainment. Wow. So why did Jungkook, given the choice of all these bigger companies, decide to go with the relatively smaller company, Big Hit? The answer was simple. Because he thought, and I quote, RM was cool, so I wanted to sign with them. That brings the number oh of members God. to five. The next member of BTS was just as surprised they to find Big so Hit as young. Big Hit was to find him, and it almost didn't happen. Kim Taehyung was always passionate about music, and it was always his dream to pursue it as a career. 
However, it was hard, as his family was poor, his parents being humble farmers. His father told him that if he was passionate about music, he should learn an instrument, and he did, spending three years practicing with a saxophone. One day, one of his friends decided to audition for Big Hit Entertainment when they were holding auditions in his hometown of Daegu. Young, being a good friend, came with him to keep him company, but when one of the team members in charge of the audition saw Young, he encouraged him to audition as well. With nothing to lose, he did. That day, he was the only one in Daegu to move on to the next round of auditions, and eventually became a trainee for Big Hit Entertainment. They decided to keep him as a surprise member, and didn't want to reveal him as one of the members until his debut. In the same vein, Big Hit had him choose something mysterious for his stage name. He decided to go with V for victory. Here seems like a nice round number to stop, right? That's crazy. He literally just went to be a supportive friend and he's the one who got the offer and no one else did. Can you imagine <laughs> if you were his friend? And like fast forward to now, like obviously he's probably happy for him, but that's crazy. This, I, I'm not even through all the members yet and I genuinely think that this is all like, this was fate, like for all of them to meet and become a group. Like I don't, I... Like having someone who, he had seven offers and he chose this one because he thought that RM was cool. And then the other guy who just was randomly found on the street and had no experience whatsoever. And then V, who went with his friend to audition. He didn't even go to audition and he's the one who got the offer. That's, that's just crazy. That is literally, in my eyes, that's fate. <laughs> okay. Let's keep going. Stop, right? Six members for a new hip-hop group, three rappers, and three vocalists. It seems like a complete group, but still there was something missing. Some one was missing. Someone that could take this already great group of artists and push it even further to achieve perfection. A powerhouse. Someone so naturally talented that they could stand out in a room full of already talented artists. This project that Big Hit had embarked upon needed a capstone. Jimin. Park Jimin was a naturally talented dancer. When he was in middle school, he attended a dance academy and continued to pursue dance at Busan High School of Arts, where he studied contemporary dance and was the top student in the whole modern dance department. Impressed by his raw talent, a teacher encouraged him to audition for Big Hit Entertainment, who were holding auditions in Busan. He was only 16 when he passed the audition and moved Crazy. to Seoul to become a trainee. He was the final member of the group, and he also had the shortest training period. What's interesting to note is that the group feels very much ragtag because in a sense, with the exception of Jimin, it was. RM and J-Hope only auditioned for Big Hit because they didn't pass their auditions with the first company they chose. And despite their amazing talent, Suga and Jungkook didn't win the competitions they were in, but they signed on to Big Hit after the fact because of their high quality performances. V never even planned on auditioning and just decided to do it on a whim. And they literally just found Jin on the streets, but perhaps it was fate because this was the group that they chose. And just like that, in 2012, the newly created Bangtan Sonyeondan, the Bulletproof Boy Scouts, or simply BTS, Boy Scouts. was seven. Got it. They had the group, but they still needed the music. In early 2013, they set out to create some social media presence for themselves before officially debuting, posting song covers on both SoundCloud and YouTube which you can still go watch today. In May, Big Hit that launched a birthday. countdown clock on their website in preparation for BTS's debut album, complete with a trailer I and a ton of promotional material, 17. including photos for that the day. first time of all the members in the official lineup. <laughs> Finally, the big day came. June 12, 2013, BTS held a press conference and a debut showcase where they performed their two singles, No More Dream and We Are Bulletproof Part 2. <laughs> The same day, the Too Cool for School album, as well as the music video for No More Dream, were released. The very next day, BTS performed the song again on their official debut stage on Mnet's M Countdown. Seeing their like aesthetic here. This Compared was the Dynamite. world's first taste of BTS. Commercially, the album didn't do extraordinarily well. The lead single, No More Dream, peaked at 124 in Korea, and the album sold only 24,000 copies during its first year. Bulletproof Part 2 didn't even chart. The first year wasn't all that great for BTS, but despite everything, people saw them. 
people saw the sparkle in their eyes and their limitless potential. They're so cute. And they were hot, of course. On July 9th, ARMY was established as BTS's official fandom. They made their comeback only two months later in September, when they released their single, No, along with their EP, part two of what would be their school trilogy, Oh, Are You Late 2. In the music video for the single, they made a commentary on the harsh Korean education system, along with their previous themes of hopes and dreams. No peaked at 92 in Korea, but also quickly fell off the charts. The album debuted at number 4 on the Gaon Weekly chart, and was the 55th best-selling album in South Korea that year. This was enough to secure them the coveted New Artist of the Year Award at the Melon Music Awards, the Golden Disc Awards, and the Soul Music Awards. Part 3 of the School Trilogy was released in February of 2014, the EP School Love Affair. This time, the lead single was Boy in Love. Look at their hair! and the other single being Just One Day. The album, as well as both singles, enjoyed moderate success, with the album topping the Gaon album chart, as well as making its first international appearance at number three on the Billboard World Albums chart. The album also marked their first distinctive change in theme, focusing more on school life and young love, as evidenced by their Boy In Love music video. They also held their first fan meetings with a crowd of 3,000 in Seoul. BTS was doing well, that is, until July. This is unfortunately a dark chapter in the lives of BTS and ARMY. That's right, American Hustle Life. I'm joking, of course, but American Hustle Life was a reality show put together by yeah, Mnet that brought that. BTS to Los Angeles where they had the unique opportunity to learn the true ways of hip hop from the masters. And it was a pretty darn cringy opportunity, but an opportunity nonetheless. Uh, whatever you do, just don't watch the Warren G version of Boy In Love, you've been warned. However, cringe and all, the trip proved fruitful for BTS, making connections, performing their first US concert for free in front of 200 fans, as well as their first appearance at KCON. The next month, in August, BTS released their first full-length studio album, Dark and Wild. The album featured two singles, Danger and War of Hormones. The album featured a marked shift in sound with a touch of R&B and electronica. It was met with moderate success. It peaked at number two in Korea, selling over 200,000 albums. In October and again in May of the following year, BTS won on their first and second concert tours, known as the Red Bullet Tour, where they visited 13 different countries, including Japan, the Philippines, Australia, the US, Mexico, and many others. Wow. They also came out with their first Japanese album in December, Wake Up, featuring many Japanese versions of their songs, as well as original tracks, Wake Up and The Stars, followed by a Japan tour and a solo concert in Korea. Although Dark and Wild got decent attention, they needed something different. They needed something that would shake things up. They got to work. April 29, 2015 was their comeback. When this album was produced, each member had a hand in writing songs for the album. They again awesome. changed their sound from aggressive hip hop to youthful colorful styles. And not only their sound, but their image as well. This can be evidenced by their newest EP, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life. And just by looking at the album cover, they ditched the dark colors and the bulletproof vest symbol that had become so synonymous with BTS and replaced it with a simple white and pink background overlaid with the title. And then they dropped the single that would change everything. I need you. I need you girl. It was sentimental, it was hopeful, it was new. Just by looking at the music video, we can see that BTS has also ditched their punk bad boy image and replaced it with a more real, vulnerable, down-to-earth, and youthful feel. This proved to be the change that BTS needed for mainstream success. I think that that's... Um, as far as the people that I've talked to, I think that that was a very pivotal time because I feel like in changing into more of like a softer um style i think that they reached more people um like emotionally with their songs um i i love rap as well so like i'm not saying that before it was ever bad um but i think that you could reach a wider audience um and maybe like sing songs that relate more um to a, a wider group of people so i think that that's really cool that they've like incorporated both instead of just hardcore songs. So, just my thought. Okay, back to it. <laughs> called it one of the greatest K-pop songs of the decade. It charted at number five in Korea and even led them to their first music show win on SBS MTV's The Show. 
And that wasn't wow. all. They released their second single, Dope, on June 24th, which started off with a poignant line from RM. Hmm. Oso wa. Bangtanen chaum iji. Welcome. Is this your first time with BTS? And you know yes. what? For a lot of people, it was. In a way, Smile. their first studio album and tour can be seen as their stepping stone between old school BTS and new school. In November, they came back with their follow-up EP, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Part 2, the second EP in what would be dubbed the Youth Trilogy, which featured the single, Run. Okay, there's another ad playing right now, so while it is, I just want to say um, I'm really trying to pay attention right now. That's why I'm not talking as much as I usually would, so I hope that you guys are cool with that. <laughs> okay, ad's over. Back to it. The album focused even more on the frivolity, friendship, and carefree attitude that comes with enjoying one's youth, but just like in I Need You, contrasted that with suffering, depression, loneliness, society, and the stark and sometimes dark reality of life. Compare this with the far cry of the No More Dreams music video. It felt real. It was darker, grittier, more humble, more meaningful, and most importantly, RM lost his mohawk. Run also connected narratively with their previous single, I Need You, and another video released in September titled On Stage Prologue established what would come to be known as the BTS Universe, or the BU. Someone told me about that, which would eventually I don't know combine is, music but... videos, short films, books, short stories, webtoons, and even a mobile game to create a cohesive wow. story. And I won't go down this rabbit hole because there is a lot to digest, but it's definitely something to look into if you're a hardcore army. The same month, they kicked off their third tour the most beautiful moment in life on stage tour where they performed songs from their two recent EPs, part one and part two. And part two was a hit, their biggest so far. It topped the weekly Gaon album and Billboard World Albums charts. And on Billboard, it stayed there for multiple weeks, the first K-pop act to do so. It also appeared on the Billboard 200 albums chart, not world albums, which was reserved for foreign non-English songs, but simply the top 200 albums, peaking at 171. Which is That's kind of amazing awesome. considering that this was back in 2015. They also received Best World Performer at the 17th Mnet Asian Music Awards. This brings us to part three of the Youth Trilogy. The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Young Forever. Released on May 2nd, 2016, which featured probably my favorite BTS album cover. Young Forever was actually a compilation I'm album of parts Potter one Balloon, and so two. That's my so it was mostly the same too. songs, <laughs> but it was notable that it had some new singles, Epilogue, Young Forever, Fire, and Save Me. The latter two performed exceptionally well, with both songs topping the Billboard World Digital Songs chart. This was also the second BTS album to chart on the Billboard 200 at 107, and it topped both the Gowan Weekly and Monthly chart, which earned BTS their first Daesung. <laughs> Album of the Year at the 8th Melon Music Awards. They went on to do the second half of their tour, the most beautiful moment in life on stage epilogue, selling out many of their concerts and even selling out KCON in the US where they headlined the event. In September, they wow. dropped their second Japanese album, Youth, featuring Japanese versions of tracks from their previous three EPs. Which went gold and peaked at number one on Japanese charts. And only a month later, in October of 2016, it happened. BTS dropped their second studio album, Wings. It sold over 500,000 copies in its first week. In comparison, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life Part 1, released just the previous year, which topped the gown chart, sold about 500,000 in its entire lifetime. Wings was big, but the true showstopper was its lead single, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. That has been requested a lot. And I'm gonna do it once which got I figure them their out who first everyone is. All kill, <laughs> topping eight music charts in South Korea. Its music video gained six million views wow, in the first 24 hours, though. which broke the YouTube record for the highest number of views of a K-pop group music video within 24 hours. The album hit number 26 on the Billboard 200, the highest ever charting K-pop album on That's Billboard. Amazing. They ended up selling 1.5 million copies in South Korea in 2016 alone, and it netted them the Artist of the Year award at the Eminent Asian Music Awards that same year. The first non big three artists ever to receive that award. After Blood, Sweat, and Tears, they were on a roll. BTS was unstoppable. 
In February of 2017, they released the instant hit Spring Day, which, oh, quoting a Korean funny. reviewer, embodied nostalgia and sorrow that and opened a new chapter in BTS's aesthetics too. and lyricism and attracted fans down. across generational boundaries. Which, by the way, is still on Korean charts after nearly four years. And the same day I'm writing this, it ranked number 53 on Melon. It won Song wow. of the Year at the 9th Melon Music Awards. After the release of Spring Day, they went on yet another tour, the 2017 BTS Live Trilogy, Episode 3, The Wings Tour. The tickets sold out within minutes, including in the United States, the first K-pop artist to do so, and went on to win Best Social Artist at the Billboard Music Awards. The first for a Korean artist, but they would go on to win this award four years in a row. The next year was a period of massive growth for both the group's popularity as well as their style. They released the Love Yourself series starting with Love Yourself Her in September of 2017, Love Yourself Tear in May of 2018, and Love Yourself Answer in August of 2018. Three albums that gave us some of the most classic BTS songs that we know and love today, such as Mic Drop, Fake Love, Euphoria, Alright, there's another ad. Mic drop. I want to check that out because that looked up my alley. <laughs> that was that was cool. Dang, I'm very impressed. I'm just going to pause it here since there's an ad playing um, before we get into the next song. But um, I just want to say I think that it's so important and very respectable that they um are obviously they're singing about um things that make them happy and things like that but i also think that it's really cool and not very common that they get into um more harsh topics like they said like mental health and um anxiety and just things like that um especially because i think at that time they were all in like their late teens and i think that i struggled with that as a as a teenager like a high schooler so i think that it's cool like they're so relatable and i think that that's why people gravitate towards them so much because no matter what your preferences of music you can find a song or two that that just speaks to you um, and I can't wait to find, like, that song for me, because, like, I know I will. They have so many songs, um, and I just, I just, I think that's really, um, a cool thing, so that's all I had to say about that. I'm gonna get back into it. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I hope that you guys are, um, fine with how long <laughs> that this video is gonna be. I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Euphoria. You are the cause of my euphoria. Idol. Can't call me artist. Can't call me idol. idol. Up, and of course. Their videos look so All three good. albums were commercial successes. Her being their first album to top wow. 2 million album sales. But Tear and Answer also did equally well. These three albums, as well as their Japanese album, Face Yourself, proved that they weren't done yet, not even close. During this time, they shattered countless records. Their singles went platinum, they topped charts, they won awards. And not only did they break YouTube records, but they broke records that they themselves set again Dang, like and the again Beatles. and again. This is the period where BTS really started enjoying global recognition, working with huge Western artists such as Nicki Minaj, Designer, and Steve Aoki. It wasn't their first time having international features on their songs, but it was definitely the biggest. And even though they were already, without a doubt, the biggest act to ever come out of South Korea, they had their eyes set even higher. They went on tour once again for the Love Yourself World Tour. During this tour, they collaborated with Steve Aoki to make the song, Wasted On Me. Wasted on me, wasted on me. Notable for being their first all-English feature. And it also served as a jumping-off point for BTS to gain a following of English speakers. Not that they were Map of the Soul Persona. First things first, you can't mention Map of the Soul Persona without mentioning Boy With Love. It was simple math. What do you get when you cross the singer of one of the best charting songs of all time that went platinum 59 times in 13 different countries with, without a question, the most globally dominant pop Dang, group of all time? Well, out. you get this. Yeah, 
nothing less than an instant hit. Number eight on Billboard Hot 100, platinum in the US, 21 music show wins. Number one on iTunes in 67 different countries. The most liked and the most viewed YouTube video in the first 24 hours. The fastest video to reach 100 million views. A current view count of over one billion views seven boys, one girl, and seven <laughs> different hair colors. They were the talk of the town, invited to talk show after wow. talk show after talk show. The second single on the album was Make It Right. Oh, I can make it right. Written by Ed Sheeran himself, Ed Sheeran. including a version featuring Loud. How have I the not album heard debuted of these at number songs? one on Gallup and sold 3.2 million copies its first month, and that's only in Korea. It became the best selling album in South Korea ever. It swept every major Korean music show, winning Album of the Year in each one of them. They followed up this legendary EP with the Love Yourself, Speak Yourself World Tour, where they sold out both the Rose Bowl and the Wembley wow. Stadium in only an hour, the only non English speaking act to do so. They even performed as a solo act in Saudi Arabia. Arabia, the first foreign act to do that. The last stop of their tour was at South Korea's largest venue, the Seoul Olympic Stadium. They ended up grossing $200 million. During this time, they also created a visual novel style game for mobile devices called BTS World, where the player can interact with the members. This also came with an original soundtrack with tracks unique to the game featuring Western artists. Zara Larson, Charlie XCX, and Juice World for the tracks A Brand New Day, Dream Glow, and All Night, respectively. In December of 2019, the group swept the grand prizes for both the Melon and Mnet Music Award shows, the first artist to do that. Map of the Soul Persona was legendary, truly a marvel in modern music. So how could BTS follow up the best-selling album in South Korean history, you may ask? Easy. Make an even better-selling album. And that's what they did with Map of the Soul 7. The album was released on February 21st of 2020, featuring the singles Black Swan... That's another one that I wrote down that I saw a lot. And that one. And On. He is so beautiful. And sold over 4.1 million albums in just the first week. And the first Korean album to be certified as Quadruple Million on the Gaon Music Chart. It debuted at number one on music charts all over the world, including the US, Korea, the UK, Japan, and much of Europe. It's not an exaggeration to say that this album left a permanent mark yes. on the world, launching BTS into legendary status and becoming the best selling artist in South Korean history. BTS had scheduled a Map of the Soul tour for April of that year, which would have undoubtedly outsold their record breaking tour only a year prior. But unfortunately, the COVID pandemic caused the entire My tour to be postponed, tickets. including the show at the so Rose Bowl, sad. which I was supposed to attend. But that didn't stop BTS. Yes, who performed virtual concerts, spoke at the Dear Class 2020 graduation event, and released the Japanese version of their recent album with an original Japanese single, Stay Gold. Stay gold. And to top it all off, this was only June. At this point, it was clear that BTS had already dominated their home turf, and they had topped the music charts all over the world. This time, their sight was set for the very top. Remember that scene in The Social Network where Mark and Sean talk about how they don't want a million dollars, they want a billion dollars. How they're not interested in catching 14 trout, but they'd rather catch an 800 pound marlin? Well, that's what they set their sights on. The marlin, the biggest music industry in the world, the United States. And at the top of that what? music industry, number one on Billboard Hot 100. This small group from a company that virtually no one had heard about eight years ago planned to take on Goliath himself and dominate the American industry on their home turf. And all they had to do was speak English. August 21st, enter Dynamite. I love this song. It makes me so happy. Their first and only English single so far. Simultaneously performed better than anyone had expected, but at the same time is exactly what we as an audience had come to expect from the legendary boy band themselves. And they did it. They reached number one on the US Billboard Hot 100, the Global 200, and the Global Excluding US chart. And they made sure that if you hadn't heard of them before, you definitely, you definitely have. have now. And if that wasn't already the biggest flex. On October 2nd, they came out with Savage Love BTS Remix with Jason Derulo. Savage Love, did somebody, did somebody break your heart? Getting I didn't number know one that on the they're Billboard a part of Hot that? 100 again, less than two months after already getting it number one with Dynamite. And on the Global 200, where they actually replaced themselves at number one, the first artist wow. to do so ever. So what makes BTS so special? How did they achieve all this? K-pop is a genre that spans for at least 30 years and there have been hundreds of boy groups and hundreds of girl groups. What did BTS do to rise above all of them and break through to markets never before seen? 
Historically, the boy band industry has been dominated by white English-speaking bands. And the fact that BTS has not only held their own, but blew any sign of competition out of the water on a global scale can be attributed to nothing less than their talent, hard work, and a bit of a one in a million miracle. They did it through their own blood, sweat, and tears, so to speak. Around the world, we see that boy bands have pretty much fallen into obscurity, but BTS is thriving. And though I've stated this all before, it's worth saying again, in contrast to other bands who would sing about romantic relationships with girls and what some would call predictable bubblegum pop tunes, BTS is continuously pushing the envelope and changing their styles. According to an article by Vulture.com, they describe this style as much less a successor of the Backstreet Boys and more of the successors of Michael Jackson, whose That's choreography what I was thinking. and charisma I just couldn't were unprecedented. While of course there's a lot Michael of love Jackson. for the angelic vocals of BTS, rap has also played a very important part in creating their own style. In stark contrast to the typical boy band where every member sings, it's so refreshing when you're in the middle of a song and you hear RM's raw rapping skills, J-Hope's energy, or Suga's soul put into every single line. Interestingly enough, at the first glance, it seems that the success of BTS was He's miraculous, despite not being part of the Big Three. But it can also be argued that their success gorgeous. was because of their separation from the Big Three. Their label, Big Hit Entertainment, whose founder emphasizes artistic freedom more than anything else, allowed them to make their own sound. And going back to BTS Universe, it's not often that a K-pop group does something special with each of their songs and albums, utilizing strong storytelling that can go beyond simply the song itself, but rather interconnected with other songs and even other albums to create one large overarching story. And not only do they all have their own expertise in performance, but also each of them have had the experience of writing and producing their own music, and they're not afraid to let their style evolve over time. BTS during their debut is such a far cry from Wings era BTS and current day BTS. They also chose to tackle more adult issues instead of simply love and girls while they definitely didn't have a shortage of those they also cover other very important issues such as mental health regret following your dreams hard work self-love and many 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 others add that to the fact that as fans we can feel the authenticity of the members themselves they seem approachable bts seems like there's a place for every type of fan and in this fast-paced world where things change at unthinkable speeds, BTS has stayed grounded and faithful to who they were and who they are. Those kids we saw on American Hustle Life along with their dreams and passions are the <laughs> same men who stand before us today. And while some artists like to keep their personal lives private, BTS gives us a look at their personal lives through their vlogs, which allow us to become more connected That's to awesome. them than ever before. What is truly amazing is that, with the exception of just one single, they're doing this all while singing in their native tongue, Korean. Their music holds so much power that it literally breaks through the barriers of language. And no, they're not done yet. Today, November 20th, they're releasing their fifth studio album, B. Their singles on the album, Dynamite and Life Goes On. And chances are, life will go on for BTS. And chances are, they'll continue to break even more records. They've shown that they're capable of dominating music charts across the world and even reaching across the Pacific Ocean and conquering the music industry in the United States. What's next for them? Mars? In any case, <laughs> they've only started in 2013 and BTS is as strong as it's ever been. As far as we know, they will only continue to light it up like a dynamite. Wow. That was great. I feel like I just learned, I just went through a history lesson. So I'm, I'm going to wrap it up super quick because I know that this is a really long video, but some key points that I took away from that is that, A, I think that nothing was handed to them at all. I think that they all worked really hard to get where they are, obviously. And I genuinely think that that group of people specifically that was it was so like just fate like that they met each other and obviously you can tell that they're best friends they're like brothers and I think that that it was just that was meant to be um another thing like I said earlier is that I really appreciate that it's not just all um just kind of like lovey-dovey typical like boy band song I think it's really cool that as they've grown up, they've tackled more um, diverse um, songs and things and topics. And I think that it's amazing that they talk so much about mental health and loving yourself and following your dreams. Because I think that they can relate to so many more people that way. And obviously, it's worked. So, um, 
yeah, I think that this is really good that I watched this because now I feel like I have a backstory. So, um, next I'm gonna go over the video with all the members just so I can kind of put, um, names to faces and then I will get back into music videos and hopefully I can point people out. Um, but so far I, I like all of them. I know in my last video everybody said that, um, Jimin, um, I think he's, I think he's amazing, but I think that they're all amazing. So I have to kind of learn all of them more to figure out like who my bias is. Um, so yeah. So anyways, thank you so much if you're still here for sticking around for this extremely long video. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed and I will get out as many videos as fast as I can. Just again, please bear with me. I'm so busy. I know that you guys are probably all busy too, but I just want to do quality videos over quantity. So anyways, thank you so much for your kindness and your positivity and welcome, welcoming me into this amazing group of people. And I cannot wait to dive even deeper into my BTS journey. So thank you guys.